Claude Monet once said, I perhaps owe having become a painter to the flowers. I would say he should have said, I perhaps owe having become a painter to the bees, because without the bees, there wouldn't be the flowers. And without the flowers, there wouldn't be the bees. How do bees paint the environment? We can see their handiwork when we look around us, but how do they do this? How does this come about? Well, let's start with discussion of recruitment behavior. Bees have a dance language. And by use of this dance language, which involves this dance you're observing right here, they paint the environment socially. Different recruits are sent to different areas of the landscape where they uh, collect pollen and nectar from the flowers and pollinate them. Carl von Frisch in 1973 uh, got the Nobel Prize for uh, working through the details of the dance language, the communication system of honeybees. It started out when he made some observations uh, using an observation hive, which is shown here, uh, that some bees did a dance which he called the waggle dance, like the one on the left, and some did the dances that he called the pollen dances, which were on the right. Uh, he distinguished between these because the, uh, he would observe bees doing the waggle dance, and they didn't have pollen loads on their legs. Uh, and he just assumed that the other ones were, were, that they were doing nectar, and that the other ones doing this round dance that you see on the right there uh, were collecting pollen. He did a series of experiments. He started publishing them in 1923. The, the first was when he went out and he set out feeding stations. Uh, situated around an observation hive. So this observation hive, as I showed you, has glass sides to it. So you can observe both sides of the comb at the same time. Normally, a, um, a nest, a, a natural nest, the, the combs would be oriented side by side vertically, uh, but there you can't see what's going on on the inside. So the observation hives were, were developed, invented and developed so that you could stack the combs uh, vertically, and then you could look at both sides through glass walls. So he set up an observation hive out in the field, and he set up feeding stations, such as these pictured here. These feeding stations uh, were simply a small uh, uh, container of sugar solution, uh, typically, and typically he had some sort of a card underneath them, a colored card or whatever, that the bees could then use also as for cues. And the, the, um, the sugar solutions were scented. He would put some kind of, of scenting in them, like peppermint oil or, or, or anise. Uh, and then he would sit and he would watch the bees coming uh, to these feeding stations. What he observed is if he would feed here, the bees would go there. If he would feed here, the bees would go there. They wouldn't show up at the other stations uh, where he wasn't feeding. And so he decided that what they're doing is that they're following the olfactory signals uh, of, the, of the, the solutions. Because if, when he fed, he fed with solution, but he had out at the other stations no solution. I mean, no, no odor in their solutions. So when he would put the odor in a solution, that's where the bees would go. They would follow um, the odor and go to that particular location. So he came up with what he called his olfactory theory. He said that basically what happens is bees go out and they forage some location. And when they forage that location, they're picking up the odors of the flowers that they're foraging on and the odors of the flowers are in the nectar. And then they come back to the, to the nest and they do one of these dances and the, the waggle dance. And all, what the waggle dance is saying is, hey, everybody get excited out there. There's food that smells like me. This smells like what I have. And so you, they would go out, in his theory, they'd go out and they'd search in all directions, and then they would locate the one that was giving the appropriate odor, uh, and that's where they would forage. Just like in his experiments, where only one of the stations would be getting the odor at any given time. He conducted another experiment uh, where he decided to watch the bees, the dance on the comb. So he knew they were doing a waggle dance when they were foraging for nectar at his foraging stations. But 
he was watching all day long and he was recording the dances so he could he could feed and record the dances so he could see where the dances were pointing but what he noticed was as throughout the day the dances changed the orientation that this the straight line run of the dance the waggle on the surface of the comb uh changed the angle over the course of the day and it corresponded to the change in the angle of the sun as the sun traverses the the horizon during the course of the day the bees were changing their dance and so he started thinking now wait a minute the waggle dance uh has uh directional information in it uh so he decided to conduct some further experiments and determine you know how the waggle dance orientation was related to the orientation of the sun eventually he did he got around to doing what he called his array experiments in the array experiments what he would do is he would set out a feeding station that had sugar solution being fed to it uh, and then he would have um uh, just cards with no feeders located at um different positions in an array where the 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 feeding station was in, was in the center and then the cards were in this array a uh, uh, fan uh, arrayed near the feeding station then he had put students out on each of these cards and he would watch he would observe bees that would approach those cards at, you know in in a casting motion that he interpreted to be they're searching for the food and what he found was is that when he set up these arrays the 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 card that was in the center of the array that was in alignment with the feeding station would always get the highest number of visitors recruit bees going there and searching so he looked at this and he said well the the dance the the waggle dance is very very accurate with respect to the information that is conveying and he did a series of these and whenever he'd set up in different directions or whatever the 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 dances would change on the comb with the orientation of where the bees were being fed uh but it was always the direction of the actual resource being provided the feeding station is where the majority of the recruits would show up then he did another experiment he set up his observation hive and he progressively moved the feeding station uh at a greater and greater distance from the observation hive what he noticed was as he increased the distance from the uh observation hive the dances changed when the feeding station was very close to the observation hive the bees did a round dance so hmm what's going on here the round dance isn't about collecting pollen and the waggle dance about nectar uh maybe this is all about distance as he moved the feeder further and further from the observation hive the dances changed they went through a progressive change the the round dance opened up into a sickle dance and then a little bit further out the sickle dance it was start closed up and had some waggle contents to it where the bees were wagging their abdomen as they would as they would go through it and by the time he got out to 100 meters or more the the bees were doing this full formed waggle dance the waggles were the 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 figure eight was closed up and the waggles were going through the center of the figure eight giving directional orientation so he concluded that that the form of the dance was related to the distance um to the to the resource Then he did a series of step what he called step experiments to see how accurate that was and it was built pretty much like the array he put out a feeding station where he would offer food as a reward and then he had other stations set up that were there with the the colored cards but did not have the food being offered and again he put out students to sit there and count the number of recruit bees that arrived at those um those other locations and the and the cards that were not being used for feeding and what he found was like he did with the array that the the concentration of the recruits was was around centered around the actual feeding station so he said aha there's 
distance information as well as directional information in the waggle dance. Through a series of experiments, he was able to show that the main feature of the dance that gives the information about distance is the waggle portion, and it's the time of the waggle portion, and how long does it take to go from one end to the other, and then make your turn, and then go up and make your turn. And also associated with that was the number of waggles that were taking place during this. But it was the timing of, of this dance that provided the, the distance information. The longer the time it took to go through the central uh, waggle part of the dance, the further the resource. If the resource is really close, the dances were very fast. As they got further away, they got slower. And you could plot it. You could look at the waggle duration, the duration of the time that they're going in this, this waggle pattern on the, on the face of the comb. Uh, and you could then plot the distance in meters. So if the source is very close, then the waggle duration is very short. And it's not a linear function, but it's a quasi-linear function with respect to um, duration and distance. So we're armed now. We, we, can, we can read these dances. We have enough information from von Frisch's experiments that we can be like Dr. Doolittle, only we can't talk to the animals. We can listen to them. We can actually go out take an observation hive. We can put feeding sources out in the environment. We can then sit there with the proper tools and we can determine, oh, this bee is foraging in a certain direction at, and at a certain distance. So bees are able to translate angles. When, they, when they're dancing, the, um, the dance that they do is the location of the flower sources that they're foraging on in relation to the sun. It's the sun that's sitting on the horizon. You know, it's only on the equator that the sun would ever be directly overhead. There's always some angle from the sun down to the horizon. So you can find the sun and drop a perpendicular to the horizon, and then you can take the source, a floral source, and you can determine the angle between the sun's azimuth on the horizon and, and, the, and the source of the, of, the, of the reward. And that angle is what bees can calculate, but then they translate that angle from the vertical plane into a horizontal plane because they do their dance on, excuse me, from the horizontal plane onto the vertical plane because they do their dance on the vertical plane. So they have to be able to translate that angle. So now we're prepared to decipher the language. We can't talk to the bees, but we can listen to them. Um, the way I like to, to look at it is, is, is in a diagram like this. So I, I picture myself standing on top of the hive. And then I go out and I, lo I locate the sun, the direction of the sun. And then I locate the direction of the food source. In the case of, of A, uh, the, top the top line there, the food source is in line with the position of the sun. So then you translate that from the horizontal into the vertical and put the sun at the top of the comb and you'll be dancing straight up on the comb as in A on the left because the top of the comb represents the sun. So the food source is located in the direction of the sun. The sun is up top, you're dancing in that direction. So this represents the sun. In B, the food source is in the opposite direction from the sun relative to the hive. So if you're standing on top of the hive and you're looking out there and you say, well, there's the sun on the horizontal plane and the food source is back here on the horizontal plane, then the bees are foraging 180 degrees angle from the sun opposite the sun. So now you translate that up to the vertical, again, the vertical plane, and the sun's at the top of the comb. They're dancing in 180 degrees away from the sun, so they're dancing straight down on the comb. They're orienting the waggle part of their dance straight down. In the bottom one, the 
you're standing again on top of the hive and the sun is over here to your right. And at a 90 degree angle to the right of the sun, to the, which is behind you, is the food source. So the bees are dancing to 90 degrees to the right of the sun. And again, the sun being, you find the sun and you drop a perpendicular to azimuth to the, to the horizon. So it's, a, it's 90 degrees to the right of the, of the sun on the horizon. And so they translate that into a dance, a vertical dance on the comb as being 90 degrees to the right of the sun. So they're dancing to the right on the comb. So you can take that information and you can determine where they're foraging. If you time those dances and you've calibrated the way that we showed the calibration for the duration of the waggle portion of the dance uh, to the distance from the source, if you calibrated it, then you can go back and look at your chart and you can say, well, it was a certain amount of time for the a certain amount of time for the waggle. And so I can go out here and it tells me that, oh, they're foraging at about 2,000 meters. So you can get the, the location. You have the distance and the direction uh, and you can locate where they're foraging. What's amazing is that this fascinating work of von Frisch that got him a Nobel Prize was done, and you can do it too, you can do it at home. It's done with few tools. You have an observation hive, so you can actually observe the dances on the combs as we, we showed the dancing at the beginning of this segment or this module. Uh, you need something that you can put sugar solution in and in this case, there's a screen mesh on top of, of, a, of a thin dish uh, so the bees can stand on it and they won't drown while they're collecting it. Uh, you need some sugar solution. Typically, uh, it's around 50% solution. Uh, you need some kind of scent to put in it. In this case, it's peppermint oil. You need a protractor so that you can actually place it on the glass uh, cover of the observation hive, and you can actually get the direction of the dance relative to the sun, which is straight up on the comb, and a stopwatch so that you can time the interval of the waggle portion of the dance.